my name is Kelly Dale and I'm owner of Off the Beaded Path which is located in Forest City, North Carolina. For the past two weeks I've showed you how to make a pair of earrings and a bracelet using the top drilled teardrops. So today I'm going to show you how to make a necklace for the set so that way it'll pull the whole set together. Um, for the project today, well first let me show you the project. Um, this is the necklace let me get it here. This is the necklace that I want to show you today. This is the nickel and um, black version. And as you can see, it uses the top drill drops. And then I have a different shaped teardrop here in the center. So this is the first um, color sample I can show you. And then here is a turquoise with um, clear and the clear crystals. Now as you can see it has a different centerpiece and I'll explain that to you um, as we get started on the video. But for today's project, the cool thing about this is it really doesn't take a ton of seed beads even though it looks like it does. Um, you're going to use about half of a tube of one color, size 11, and I'm going to call that color A. You're going to use two capfuls and when I say a capful a capful is basically what would come on your tube of a cap. That's two capfuls. You're going to need eight top drilled drops, whatever you want to use, one centerpiece drop. I'm going to use um, the bigger clear one today for the project. You're going to need two head pins. I'm going to be using the ball end head pins, two silver wire protectors, one silver lobster claw, two inches of silver extender chain, one bicone color of your choice, whatever you're going to use for your project, a size 12 beading needle, and four and a half yards of six pound fire line. I wouldn't suggest going over the six pound because some of the beads you're going to be going through quite a few times. So it, um, it's we're using the six pound, it was a little hard on some of them getting them back through. So just be sure to um, stay with your six pound. Um, besides that, I think that's all you're going to need. So go ahead and get all your materials together and then the we'll get started. The first thing that we need to talk about before we start the project today is your centerpieces. This is the one I used on the black sample that I showed you, and this is the one I used on the clear sample that I showed you. Pretty much any centerpiece will work for this necklace. This one they call a horse eye, and I'm assuming it's because if you turn it like this, it can look like the outline of a horse's eye. Uh, well, don't know if I would have called it that myself, but I didn't name the bead. The hole in the bead is here along the top through the top just like they are in your teardrop shapes. So it's very easy to thread this bead on. The other bead that I'm using has a hole all the way through the center and through the bead like this. To combat this so it'll be easier to thread on, what I did was I actually put it onto a head pin and made a wrapped loop. And let me get it up past that bad place there. So you can see my ball in head pin, I've got the bead, and then I've done the little wrapped loop up here so that it threads onto my piece very easily. So that is the difference between the two that I'm going to be using today. Like I said, you can pretty much use any centerpiece and that's how you combat it. You can either thread it straight through or you can put it on the head pin, whatever you want do. The colors I'm going to use today are brand, one of the colors is a brand new color and I am in love with this. This is the 11O Metallic Suede Blue. It's um, a really, really pretty matte, um, almost pastel, um, uh, not really pastel, but that's the coating, would be like a pastel coating. The other color I'm going to use today is the 11O Silver Line Milky Montana Blue. This color is my A, this color is my B. So A and B. I'll start off with enough thread that you're comfortable working with. For me, I'm going to start out with about three yards. The first thing I want to do is use a different bead and I'm going to make this into my stop bead. Now I'm going to bring it all the way to the end, leaving myself about a three inch tail. And I'm going to go right back up through this same bead again so that when I hold it in place and pull the thread, a thread wraps around the bead. 
this is going to be my stop bead. This is going to help all my other beads stay on the thread while I'm using it. Here's my pattern. I'm going to pick up one B and six A's. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, four, five, and six. So one B and six A's. And I'm going to pick this up enough times that it will go around my neck. For the example that I'm going to do today, I'm going to pick up 43 total sets of these beads. However many you need, you need an odd number of sets. The thing about my sample is it's going to be about 16 and a half inches and I'm going to use a lobster claw and an extender chain so it'll make it up to 18 inches. So that's the thing that you want to think about when you're working on the project. But go ahead, do enough repeats that this will go around your neck and again, I'm going to double check but I think I have 43. Once you finish all your repeats, and again, I did have 43, you want to thread on one last B. And you're going to let it drop all the way down. And then you're ready to add the first part of your clasp. You'll want to thread on your wire protector. So we'll go up one side, down the other side and the first part of your clasp. And like I said, I'm gonna use a lobster claw. So I'm gonna let this drop all the way down into the wire protector. And then I'm gonna pull the thread till the wire protector meets the last bead. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze the wire protector together here at the bottom. Just like that. And I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna go through the B the six A's and the B. And I'm going to pull the thread and when I pull it, I'm going to go ahead and pull it all the way down, pull so that it doesn't leave any extra thread through here in this part. Now you're ready to actually start working back towards the other end, making your first set of embellishments. So for my first set, I'm going to pick up three A's one B and three A's. This will be your repeat for the entire piece. Three A's, one B, and three A's. Take the needle and come through the next B. So you're going to skip the A's and just go through the one B. So that when you pull, it'll make a loop that looks just like this one. And you're going to do this the entire time, picking up three A's, one B, and three A's. Skip the A's and go through the next B here on the base. And this will make two loops that look just like this. And you'll want to do the entire thing. When you get to the end, be sure and stop at this last B before this last little set of A's here. So stop before the last set of A's. Once you reach the end of the necklace, as you can see, I've left the last little section here like I told you to do. And when you leave, the reason you leave this last little section is so that it'll match the other end of your necklace. So the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and go through those last beads. So we're going to just go through the last six A's and the B. And I'm just going to pull that um, stop bead to the side for now and not really do anything with it. Just leaving it there. And it's okay on this row if these turn up and down your little embellishments you did, but make sure when we do this next row that all your embellishments are downward like this one. <clears throat> now just like the other side here, we're going to do this side the same exact way. So we'll go up one side of the wire protector and down the other side. I'm going to use some extender chain. It doesn't matter what chain you use. Um, just as long as your lobster claw will fit through it. And I'm going to let it 
ball into the wire protector. I'm going to squeeze the wire protector there on the very end and I'm going to let it come all the way down to that last bead that I threaded on. Now, I'm going to come back down through the B, the six A's, the B, and then I'm going to go through three A's and a B of the last loop that I added. Pull that on through. All right. So here I go. I'm going to pick up the same thing. I'm going to do three A's, one B, and three A's. I'm going to take the needle and go through the next B. That's going to be this, um, I should say the next B from the, pre the row just finished. We're not going through the ones on this top row. We're going to go through the ones that we just completed. So that now, that gives me another little net here. And like I said, if you've got one that flipped up to the top, just take your fingers, flip it down like this, and you'll pick up your sequence, which is the three A's, the one B, and the three A's, and go through the next B from this previous row. Okay. So that it looks just like this. And you're going to do that down this whole row. Once you've completed the row, this is what your piece will look like. Now, if you lay it flat out like this, it's going to be wavy. But when you curve it into the neck shape, just like our neck would be, it's going to lay exactly like it should. So don't worry if yours is ruffly. I've ended by coming through my last B here on this last little loop. So what you want to do at this point is go through the three A's, the B, the six A's, and the B. So we're going all the way to the end. Go through the lobster, not the lobster claw, bless my heart. Go through the wire protector again and then down through the B. When you go through the wire protector, make sure that your thread goes inside of the little groove there. Come back down, so we're gonna go through the six A's and the B, and then three A's, a B, three A's and a B. So essentially you're coming out of the last B that you added on this last row. So again, just like we've done on all the previous loops, Lord, I'm going to drop the camera here. We're going to pick up three A's, one B, and three A's. Go through the middle B of the next little section just like we've been doing the only difference is what we just did here we're going to do this 14 more times so you'll add a total of 15 loops so do what i just did 14 more times Once you have the 15 embellishments this is what it should look like you're now ready to start adding some teardrops so you'll pick up three a's a teardrop and three A's. Go through the next B just like you normally would if you were just adding a regular loop. And make sure to pull and when you do that's what you should have. You're going to do this twice more. So you'll pick up three A, one teardrop, three A, and go through the next loop. And you'll do this one more time. Once you've added the third teardrop, you're going to go back to your regular loops for three 
more loops. So it's three A's, one B, and three A's. And you're going to go through the next B. And then you want to repeat this two more times. And then you're going to repeat adding three more drops. So do this, your loops, twice more, and then do three loops just like Once these. Once you've added the third repeat here of your drops, continue adding your regular loops all the way till you reach the end of the necklace. Once you've added all the loops for this row, you should be exiting out of the last B. Work your way up with the needle, come up, go through the wire protector just like we normally would, and then pull the stop bead off of the short thread, pull it off, and go ahead and tie the threads together. And then we want to get rid of this short tail here. So I've come up through, I've tied off the thread, and now I've taken my short tail and woven it back down through the piece. I wanted to show you this nifty little new tool that Helby's come out with, the beadsmith. It's a new thread zapper that they've come out with, and the thing about this one is that your thread zap part is actually on the inside. So when you push the button upward, your piece comes out of the little compartment and it heats up and you just touch it to your um, your thread and it will burn your thread just like the regular thread zapper this one's just made so that you don't burn yourself or there's no way to burn yourself another thing I like about this thread zapper is when you open up the compartment the battery compartment here it gives you an extra tip um, for the thread zapper so that you don't have to buy an extra tip anytime soon and it's hidden and stored securely inside of the little thread zapper so that's the thing I like about it now I started off with three yards and it did most of my piece um, the only problem is I still have to work on my center part but right here is where I kind of started to run out so I've threaded my needle with about another yard of thread and I'm gonna come down somewhere here near the center and I'm going to show you how I add thread. It's basically the same way that I did with the on the rocks bracelet. I'm going to pick a part of the bracelet or necklace, any part of it, and I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a tail enough to kind of hold on to. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch through my beads in various directions so that it will hold my thread in place. So I started here, I have came up, I'm gonna come back down the other way, and I'll tell you what I might actually do on this one just to show you, is I think I'll just continue to go through this one little section here so you can pretty much see what I'm doing. So I come down through those three, so I'm right back where my thread was at. Now I'm going to go right up through all these beads again here so that as I work and I pull this thread, my tail, or it will be in it so that my thread is not going to come out. So see, when I pull this thread tight now, this thread is not getting any shorter because it is secure in the piece. So you don't actually have to tie on a new piece of thread to start. You can just stitch through your beadwork. And I'm going to continue to, I'm going to zap off this short thread first. So I'm going to just turn it on my thread zapper and just zap that little piece off. And I'm going to stitch down to where I'm coming out of the first B of my loop right after this, um, let me get it here centered so that you can see. So I'm coming out of this first loop right after the drop on this one side that I'm working on. So I'll be coming out of this B right here. Once you're coming out right where you're supposed to, we're going to add two more loops here with our seed beads. So I'll pick up the three A's, the B, and the three A's, come through the next B,
and I'm going to do that one more time. So 3A, 1B, and 3A, and I'm going to come through the next B. Now we need to do a turnaround because that we need to turn around so that we can come back and add these last three beads here in the center. So how I'm going to do that, I'm going to zoom in so that you can see a little better here what I'm going to do. I'm coming out of this B. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come through the 3A, the B, the 3A, the B, the 3A, then I'm going to turn around and come through the 3A, the drop, the 3A, the B, 3A, B, and A. So I'm going to show you that again. I'm basically going to take my needle and I'm going to come up and then back around so that I'm coming out of the A here right after the B I'm coming out of right now. So I'm going to turn this around so that you can see. So I'm going to go through the 3A, the B, the 3A, and the B. The 3A, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to go through the 3A and the drop. The 3A, the B. And then the B, or the A, right after that B. And I'm going to zoom out so that you can see this a little better. So it's just like this. Now, this is where we're going to add our last two drops and our center drop. So I'm going to pick up three A's a drop and three A's. I'm going to go through the A and then the B of this second loop here that I added in the center. So I'm coming out here. I'm skipping two A's, a B, and two A's and I'm going through an A and a B so that when I pull that puts the drop into place. Now I'm ready for the center piece here so I'm going to pick up three A's my center and three A's and then I'm going to come through the B and the A and pull so that it puts the bead centerpiece bead in place and now I'm ready for this last drop so I've got three A's my last drop and three A's and just like how I started over here I'm going to come through the A so basically I'm going to skip two A's, a B, two A's, and I'm going to go through the A and the B. So that now, that puts that bead in place, and it gives you all your crystals here in the center. Now my suggestion to you, with what thread you've got left, is I would do a turnaround and I would come back and I would reinforce these beads as many times as you want to with your thread. So that way, number one, it'll finish off your thread, and number two, it'll reinforce your crystals here along the so outer here edge. is the finished necklace, and as you can see, it's really, really pretty. 
with um, this blue and light blue color. The one thing that I wanted to show you that I did so that it wouldn't just be a plain um, extender chain here on the end is I actually took a little tiny ball head pin and uh, wrapped, um, put on a four millimeter just clear crystal and put a little wrapped loop on the end of it so that it would um, not be just a plain bead. And you could put a bigger bead on there if you want to or, or whatever you want. But um, this is the completed piece and and, um, I hope that you enjoyed this project. So that completes the um, Delightful Drops set. You now have a pair of earrings, a bracelet, and a necklace that will look really good when worn together. Um, we will have color kits um, available for all three of the colors that I showed you today. You can find those on our website, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Um, we'll also have the pattern for sale on there. Um, it's an instant download, so as soon as you purchase it, you can download it to your computer. And also, I just wanted to throw out there, I'm going to have a free pattern on offthebeadedpath.net for a very simple um, stringing necklace um, with these teardrop shapes. So if you don't necessarily want to wear um, this one, you might want to consider making the very simple one that we'll have on offthebeadedpath.net. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this set, and I hope you come back next week when we're going to start a whole new set of something. I'm not sure, but um, I'm sure that you guys will enjoy it. So, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!